it like and what did Jake do to get you guys through? Wasn't good at all. <laughs> um, they came out strong. Jake was unbelievable. Um, you know, we don't win that game, obviously, without uh, Jakey tonight. And then what happened after that? It seems like you guys picked up your game and got a little bit more intense. Yeah, uh, started playing a little better in the second um, and the third. Um, you know, kind of got to our game, and uh, once we did that, we were uh, a little better. At the, start, at the start of the second period, you and Wyatt and Logan come out, and you have a, a extended shift in the offensive zone. Was that you trying to kind of set the tone for how y'all wanted to play? I think it was just, um, you know, the message we got from Coach. Um, our first wasn't good at all. Um, so that was just one shift of trying to build some momentum. Jamie, before the series, you guys talked about the year building Stanley Cup happens. Your coach said one of those things was playing with the lead and shutting games down. How would you describe the way your team played after you took that lead? I thought it was, it was pretty good. Um, you know, we've played a lot of games uh, up a goal or two and um, you know, we're comfortable in those situations, and I thought we did another great job tonight with it. Did you guys feel a bit of deja vu down 0-1 going into tonight? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're three series in a row. We um, lost the first game, and, um, you know, felt in the first round we, we could have won. Game one or two didn't go our way, um, but I like uh, our second and third tonight, and we bounce back. When you're, when you're coming into this game, you know, do you think about O2 <coughs> Vegas and the urgency to avoid getting back there? Uh, no, I think about just winning this one. I think there was about a 12-minute stretch after you guys take that lead that you didn't allow a shot. What goes into kind of completely denying the front of the net the way that you guys did? Just playing the right way. Um, you know, locking down the neutral zone. They got a, a great team, obviously, with great players. Um, they can create a lot. You saw it in the first. and. Um, you know, took care of our own end and and played much better. Jamie, how gratifying is it that some of you guys that have been here so long, you and Tyler Sagan and you know Ryan Suter, are, are are the ones that are producing right now? I mean, we're just trying to do our part for this team. Um, you know, we feel we've got a good group, and it's nice to get that win tonight. What does it mean to give these home fans a win? It means a lot. Um, nothing better than playing in front of these guys and. Um, I feel like our record could be better at home, but um, it is what it is. Nothing we can do about it, but nice to get that one tonight. What are you expecting from the environment in Edmonton? Uh, craziness. Um, they got great fans up there. I'm passionate about hockey, and um, you know we've seen a little bit of it on TV and uh, some of the dance moves outside. So uh, it's going to be an electric atmosphere, and uh, looking forward to it. When you look at the five guys who are on the ice for the Marchman goal, does that say a lot about this team? I mean, I think uh, basically depth players, quote unquote, and they really came through. Yeah. Um, once again, just shuffling the lines a little bit. Um, we're pretty used to it, and um, most of the time it works out, and it did again tonight. A lot of physicality uh, in this game. Was that the message going in to be more physical? No, I think that's just playoff hockey. It's that time of year, and um, guys are doing whatever they can to, to win a hockey game. Thanks, Jamie. Thanks, you guys are stuffed in the far. The five on the ice for the game-winning goal, pretty much, you know, depth players, you, in, you know, included. Is that just kind of a message of what this team does? Yeah, I think so. I think all year. I mean, someone different stepped up. Um, I think that's the benefit of, of our team, right? The, the depth guys, um, you know, every, he, Pete trusts everybody, so uh, we were all working for it. Delandria comes in, Petrovic, I mean, these yep. are guys, and this is a huge moment. Yeah, and it, it, it works good because you have a system that everyone knows, everyone's on top of. Um, we all try to play the same way, so that helps. Ryan, uh, shots against were 16 in the first, 8 yeah. in the second, 5 in the third. Like, what did you do better? Well, Ots, Ots saved us. He kept us in that game. We didn't have a lot going. Um, we were turning a lot of pucks over. Um, I thought as the game went on, we got better at playing in their end. Um, their goalie played great. Uh, he had some big stops for them. Um, so, yeah. What can you say about the resolve of this team to 
even the series once again. Just feels like we say it every time. Yeah, it's um, you know, there's a lot of character in here. You, you got a lot of young guys that are playing hard for us old guys, and a lot of old guys that are playing hard for for the young guys. So um, just everyone's bought in. Um, nothing really phases us. You, you get down two, you find a way to come back, and um, you have a bad period. You know you got to have a, a good one to How follow nice it up. That the old guys are the ones producing right now, Ben, Zagie, and yourself. I think whoever. I mean, that doesn't really matter. I think at the end of the day, it's it's about the wins, and um, no one really cares. No one really looks at the uh, the score sheet after the game. I think guys are. You know, pumping each other up about block shots and things like that right now. Ryan, what did you sense about the urgency of not going down 0-2 again? Yeah, that was huge. Uh, we we talked about it before the game, and then to have that first period uh, was tough. Um, but like I said, Otter kept us in that game and gave us a chance to to get to our game. Um, yeah, it was it was big. It's uh, it's tough to come back from 2-0 for sure. And then what's the confidence of now going back on the road where you're 5-1? and one? Yeah, uh, but you, you have to play the right way. Um, obviously, they got a great team. You can't give them much. They, they take advantage of, of whatever turnovers or whatever you give them. Um, so, you know, it's a simple game for us, um, knowing who's on the ice for them and, and playing the right way. Can you take us through the game winner and what you saw? It looks like you're shooting to the stick on that. Yeah, one. yeah. I think uh, as a defenseman, you're just trying to get pucks down there to your guys. Um, you're almost shooting at your guys. Um, you know, that's it's hard to score a goal from from up up high like that. So, I think you want to get get it past that first guy and then put it towards somebody. You talk a lot about how Jamie leads in the room, but yep. in the start of the second period, he comes out and his line has that great shift yep. in the offensive zone. What kind of example does that set for the room? Does it change the tone at all of how you want to play the rest of the game? Yeah, we we talked about it after that first period that we need to get a four check going, and sure enough, that line went out and did it. Um, got that momentum going. Nice. Stars players, uh, Mason Marchment and uh, Jake Ottinger to take your questions. Once again, please raise your hand and wait for the microphone. We'll start on the center left with uh, Ryan Clark as soon as the microphone gets there. Go ahead. Jake, we'll start with you. A performance like this where you're busy early, often, and frequent, how hard or easy is it for you to not only stay in rhythm, but know like, hey, you're a big part of why this game is level before your team wins? Yeah, I think I've said multiple times, like, you'd rather be getting work than, you know, just sitting there. And then all of a sudden you get two-on-ones or breakaways and stuff. Sometimes those are, you know, even harder the games. You get 16 shots and 16 chances compared to, you know, 40 shots. So um, you can never pick, obviously, uh, what type of workload you're going to get. But... I mean, yeah, just staying in it and feeling good. And, uh, yeah, sometimes those are even easier than the ones with not a lot of work. We'll go uh, front right to Taylor. Mason, um, you guys talk a lot about Jamie Benn and his leadership in the room, but how important was it for him to come out in the start of that second period with that shift he had and kind of reset the tone for you guys after that first period? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, he's he's our leader, right? So, you know, uh, when he sets that kind of pace for us, uh, you know, we just, everyone wants to step over the ice and, you know, follow, follow that. So, um, you know, he's he's uh, an unbelievable leader, unbelievable person. So um, it's he's easy to follow. Front left, Josh. Mason, just following up on that, what was the difference for your group apart from Jamie's shift there? In, in the second period, they, they carried the play a lot. In, in the first, you guys really pushed back. Yeah, I, I just don't think we were we were uh, we were good enough in the first. And uh, you know, Jakey stood on his head and made some massive saves and uh, allowed us to uh, kind of get our feet wet maybe in the after the first period. And you know, I thought after that we kind of uh, you know took over and started playing our game, playing low, getting pucks in. And uh, you know, I thought thought for the rest of the game we we, we did a great job. Fourth row on the right. Oh, sorry. Do you have another question? Uh, you know, there's a couple things said, but, um, you know, I, I think everyone in there knew that, you know, we, 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 we had to be better. Center right. Hey, Mason, you, you thought you had a game winner in Colorado. How did it feel to get this one tonight? <laughs> yeah, uh, it feels good. Um, you know, there's, there's not many better feelings than scoring uh, in the playoff game. So, um, you know, we'll take that one and, uh, you know, forget about it and move on to the next one, right? So we got a big game coming up, so worry about that. 
talk time and time again about how you bounce back from these playoff losses. How does that continue to build for you? Yeah, just, I think as a, as a whole, I think um, that's what playoffs is all about, and it's not always going to go your way every night. And, uh, you know, it's just about not letting it be two nights in a row. And, um, you know, everyone's got to respond, not just me. And, you know, I think it's, you know, it's not just me that's responded. It's the group in front of me and the guys. And, uh, you know, it's just the leadership from the top down that kind of starts that and uh, knows how to bounce back after a loss in the playoffs. Second row on the right. Mason, this probably didn't go the way you drew it up, but once after you scored, uh, there was hardly anything that Edmonton was able to create near your net. Uh, how did you guys get those big names shut down? Well, didn't get any shots. Uh, I didn't. I didn't hear you at the end there. Uh, I think that's just from experience. Um, you know, we've been in this position a, a lot. So you know, the last year and this year. So um, once we get that lead, you know, we we have to play the right way, and I think we did tonight. So um, you know, once once we uh, get that that go ahead goal, you know, everyone. Everyone was doing the right things at the right time, and you know that's what we need to win games, right? We'll go uh, center left to Sean. This is for Jake, but building on what Mason just said, um, doing the right things. That I think there was a 12-minute stretch there after you guys took the lead. They didn't get a shot. A uh, lot of shooting lanes shut down. What are you seeing from your perspective that that is leading to that? Yeah, I think just um, you know doing things the right way, and you know the, those 50-50. You know, battles or pucks. I think guys are just choosing to to be on the D side, and um, you know, when you have the best player of all time probably on the other side, you know, those are the decisions that can make or break. Uh, you know, him scoring or not, and you know, it's a group effort to defend a guy like that, and uh, you know, we all did that, and those blocks, you know, the sticks and lanes, all that stuff that we did. It's that's what you need to win, and um, we've done that when we've gotten leads, and. Uh, you know, it's going to be critical. Hopefully, we're in we're in that position again a lot more. And Mason, just if you could, your take on on Jake's performance tonight? Uh, he was awesome. He was awesome. A um, couple of huge saves. You know, he's talking out there. He's competing. Um, you know, it. Uh, you know, I you know I love Jakey. So he, he's a hell of a guy. Hell of a, hell of a player. So um, you know, it's you know it's awesome to see him. You know, play so well, and you know the boys love him. So. Second row on the right, Mike. Hey, Mason. Uh, we've talked about depth all year. That was a great depth group that scored the game-winning goal. What's it like to have guys like Delandria, Petrovic be a part of something like that, you know, when they've just come into the lineup? Yeah, for sure. I think, uh, you know, our team's so deep, right? Anyone can play anywhere uh, from top to bottom, you know. Uh, anyone can play against anyone. You know, I think tonight that was, uh, you know, it didn't matter who was out there. We were, we were competing and, you know, uh, everyone to a, Maybe not in the first as much, but in the second and third for sure. Um, you know, it's those guys uh, have been playing great and playing their role, and you know that's what we need them to do. We'll take two more center on the right. This could be for either of you. When you have a first period like that with the back and forth goals there within a minute of each other, and then just you know the kind of the pressure that Edmonton had throughout that first period. What what do you think it says about the resolve or maturity in the locker room to be able to withstand? that emotionally in this sort of atmosphere? Yeah, I think uh, the boys the boys in here, you know, we, we really like each other and, you know, everyone wants to work for each other. Um, you know, I think, like you said, you know, they had a they had a really good first period and they came out hard and, um, you know, we needed to respond. And, you know, we talked about it in the first intermission and, you know, we came out and we, we did it, right? So uh, I think everyone here cares a, a lot and, uh, you know, it's going to take take everyone to you know win last one center left Ryan this is for either one of you you limit Edmonton to five shots in that final period how important was it to not only do that but what were some of those things you all did as a group that forced them to not only get such a, a limited amount of shots but they never really got settled and could find comfort in a way I think we just got to our game. I mean, when we when we play our game, it's we're a hard team to play against. Um, you know, when we do the right things at the right times, you know, I think uh, the, for the most part, uh, I think you know when we compete, it's hard to play against us. And you know, they're they're a great, like Jake said. You know, he's he's the best player in the world, right? So it's it's going to take a full team effort. And you know, I thought for the most part, we we did a great job tonight. 
Thanks a lot, guys. Stars head coach Pete DeBoer to uh, take your questions. Once again, please raise your hand and wait for the mic. We'll start uh, second row right with Nick. Hey, Pete, what was the difference between the first period and the uh, second and third? Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I think the first period, for whatever reason, we were tentative. Um, you know, we had talked about playing with a game seven mindset, and I think our intentions were in the right place, but, you know, we looked like uh, we were just, uh, you know, we were waiting. We were waiting for something to happen, and uh, I thought uh, we kind of regrouped at the end of the first and, and you know, decided to get to our game. And I, and I thought we were, I loved the second and third. I thought we were excellent. We'll go front right to Taylor. Hi. Taylor. Um, you talk a lot throughout the year about how Jamie Ben is the leader of this team in the locker room. Um, he came out and had that that shift early in the second. Him, Logan, Wyatt, yeah. lots of cycle time in the ozone. Um, how important was it, or what kind of message did that send to the rest of your group as a kind yeah. of tone reset for you? Yeah, he, he's led the way, you know, all year, um, and particularly in the playoffs. I think he's found another level for us. Uh, he's been great, and, you know, and those those two kids energize him and. Uh, you know, he's, he's been a beast out there every series we've been in, you know, and, he, and he's changed the momentum of, you know, each of the series in different ways, you know, a couple huge hits in the Vegas series. I think in the, uh, the Colorado series, it was, uh, you know, a huge goal here or, or a big play, big block, you know, and then tonight, you know, just getting that line going. Uh, and getting some ozone time because we had spent the entire first period, I felt, in our own end. So, you know, that was kind of setting the tone for the other forward lines, like, you know, this is how, how we need to play. Center left, Ryan. You just hey, Ryan. Talk, hey, Pete, you just talked about how you liked the second and the third. Yeah. What do you think it was specifically about the third where you were able to limit them to not only five shots, but they never could really look settled, especially in the final two minutes when for a little bit they had a six on four? Yeah. Well, I think obviously getting getting a, the lead, you know, it was critical. I mean, um, that that allows you to to stay above them and manage the puck and not try and push outside your comfort zone trying to score, you know. And I think you know since since uh, I guess it would have been game one against Colorado when we blew the the three nothing lead. I think we've been kind of really locked in in those situations. We've done a really good job. Front right, Leah. Hello. Hey, Pete. Uh, Jake's had a lot of great performances in the playoffs, mm -hmm. but what about tonight? Stuck yeah, out to you? solid. I mean, if, if you know, if he doesn't play the way he does in the first, we're we're in a big hole and we might not get out of it. So, uh, you know, he was our best player tonight, and he allowed us to kind of weather the storm in the first, get our legs under us, and and find a way to get control of that game. We'll go to the back left. Hey, we've talked a lot about big name veterans kind of embracing lesser roles this year. How gratifying as a coach is it to see Ben, Sagan, Suter, they're the ones that are producing and coming yeah. big right now. Yeah, all, all those guys, those guys are leading the way. I mean, we, we talked post game, we got, we got huge blocks down the stretch from, you know, Heiskanen, Suter, Pavelski, um, uh, Tanov, you know, some big, big block shots at key times. So, you know, th those those guys are laying it on the line every night for us. They're not just producing, but, you know, they're 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 committed uh, to do whatever they have to do to try and help us win. We'll stay on the left, Sean. Hey, Sean. Hey, Pete. Um, you talked before the series started about Stanley Cup habits, and when I asked you what those were, yeah. you said specifically kind of shutting down games just like this. So... You know, you go a stretch of that third period, 12 minutes without allowing. lead in the Colorado series in game one and in game two we almost blew a four nothing lead so you know it hasn't been uh, all perfect but I think we've we've learned from those situations and and uh, you know we we seem to be really comfortable right now 
you know, when we get in those spots. We'll take a few more. Second row on the right. Hi, Pete. Uh, you've just touched on how you're able to uh, really shut it down after you guys took the lead for good in the third period. But specifically, uh, they're big guys, the Oilers' big guys, who scored all of the goals, the goals in uh, game one, got nothing this time. Yeah. Uh, what did you specifically change to accomplish that? Yeah. You know what, I just think we, we played better. I mean, you know, minus the first period, you know, I, I thought I thought they kind of, you know, we gave them too much room, too much time, uh, allowed them to, to dictate play in our end in the first period. And I thought, I thought once we changed that, um, you know, I, I thought, you know, the rest of our game kind of followed. And, and when we're playing the way we did in the second and third, when we're, we're in the offensive zone, when we're on top of you, when we're closing quickly, when we're managing the puck, um, you know, there's not a lot of room out there. We, we're a tough team to play against for good players. And, you know, we, we've done it. You know, we did it to the Colorado big guys for, for good stretches, and we did it to the Vegas big guys for good stretches. It's, it's you know, easier said than done, but we got to do it again in game three and again in game four. Second row on the right, Mike. Hey, hey P. Uh, we've talked so much about the depth players. The Landria comes in, Petrovic is yeah. on the ice. They're both out there for the game-winning goal. What kind of mental strength does it take to just do that and then when you get your opportunity, jump? Yeah. Well, we've talked about the importance of our depth and, and you know, I have no problem going to a, a guy like Delhi who hasn't played since, I think, game one of the Colorado series or game two. Um, so, you know, and, and uh, you know, we, we've got some other guys close to, you know, Rupe is really close to coming back. So, you know, we've got some tough decisions to make, but I think our group understands and has accepted the fact that, you know, if they're in, they're going to give us everything they have. And if they're not, they're going to be ready you know, for when they do get called. We'll take two more, the back left. Hey Pete, you guys have been so good on the road in this playoff run. Um, when Jamie was asked what he's expecting in Edmonton, he said, craziness. Yeah. What are your expectations of what's waiting for you in game yeah. three in that atmosphere? Yeah, for sure. But, you know, is it any crazier than Vegas on the road or Colorado on the road? You know, it's, a, it's another really tough rink uh, with great fans, um, with a great team, so. You know, we've got a we've got a formula that works for us. We've got to go out there and do it again. Last question, center right. Pete, your group seems like one that doesn't get too high or it doesn't get too low. It kind of just weathers and stays yeah. level. How, how do you maybe well, how would you identify the origin for this that sort of resolve and, and yeah. personality of your team? And how you develop? I, that? I think it's a leadership. You know, I, I think when you look at the personalities of our leaders, you know, Jamie Ben, Joe Pavelski. Uh, Tyler Sagan, uh, ultra competitive people, but you know, in an understated way. You know, they're they're not they're not riding those emotional waves. They've been around long enough that uh, they they get that that's not gonna be productive. Um, so that's all leadership in our dressing room. Thanks a lot, Pete. Thank you. Thanks everybody. That concludes media availability for tonight.